Hi guys, it's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Academy here at Prairie Sports Village. I'm going to go head to head with these two big boys. We're going to go Callaway, Great Big Bertha Epic Sub-Zero versus the brand new TaylorMade M1 Driver. These two are going to be a good head to head because there is an adjustable weight that goes front to back. So offering you either forgiveness with the weight back or low spin with the weight forward. This is a head to head video, so it's not a long drive video. Stay tuned if you want to see that long drive video because that is coming soon. But this is just a standard head to head. I'm going to hit it normal, not full power. Um, I'm going to test it in five shots each with the weight back. Then I'm going to move the weight forward and test another five shots each on GC2 HMT. I'm also testing out the new GC quad today, uh, but I'm using the GC2 HMT that's connected to the software. Real Pro V1s. And we're going to see what is the difference between these two drivers. I've got both these drivers in the same shaft, the Aldila Rogue uh, 70 gram extra stiff shaft. So it'll be a very good, interesting test. Very different in the looks. I've just done a test on the um, TaylorMade M2 versus the Callaway Greg Big Bertha Epic Standard. If you want to see that video, it's already on my channel. I just need to make sure I'm, I'm selected with the right club here. We're going to go M1 first, weight back. M1 weight back. Um, I'll show you a couple of shots, but just to speed up the process, We'll skip through a few and then we'll have a look on the sim in a bit to see what the numbers look like. Let's go M1 first, weight back. Looking forward to this test. So that's five done with the TaylorMade M1 weight back to the most forgiving setting. I'm now going to do the same with the Callaway Great Big Bertha Epic Sub-Zero, where the weight is back. There's a 12 gram weight in the back of the head. <laughs> Get away. And there is a two gram weight in the front. Okay, so that's five done so far with the weight all the way back. I think it's only fair with these two drivers that I test it with the weight forward as well because it does change the characteristics of the clubs quite enormously. So I've moved ugh, the center of gravity on this club all the way to the front, but I've kept that middle track still very neutral. Let's see what it does compared to not only the Callaway Great Big Bertha Sub-Zero Epic, I said the wrong way around, but let's see what it also does compared to the weight back positioning that I did first. So I'm gonna go five more and I'll do the same with the Callaway as well. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same now with the Callaway Epic. Um, it's not as quick as the TaylorMade process because you've got to take both of the weights out, the two gram weight and the 12 gram weight to allow it to swap over. Okay, so that is all 10 shots done. Five weight forward, five, five weight back, five weight forward. Let's jump over and see what those numbers are actually coming out as. Oh, I enjoyed that, that was good. Okay, so I've summarized all the numbers. Ready for this, this is very interesting. Uh, to give you some idea on again, the, the difference between the two golf clubs for me, very similar to what I got from the uh, Epic and M2 result, is the, the Callaway, the Epic Sub-Zero is a, a much deader sound. It sounds almost, um, I don't know, it, it just, it does, it sounds dead. I don't mind that sound, it was a nice sound, it's a refreshing sound. The M1 is nowhere near as loud as the M2, but it's definitely still louder than the Epic Sub-Zero. It's got more of a, it's got more of a crack to it, but not a, a smash like the M2 had. So it's a little bit louder than the M1. Feel-wise, again, I was getting more solid feel off the Callaway, but I was getting more spring off the M1. Let's have a look at the numbers. So I've managed to take all of the ten, five shots from each of the weight forward, weight back positions and put them in some sort of a chart. Um, let's go through Epic Sub-Zero first. Um, weight back was the position I first got it in. That's normally the most forgiving setting. Typically you see a higher spin rate, um, 
and, and typically it's a player who, who doesn't really struggle with spinning the ball low and they want that extra bit of forgiveness. I was finding a carry distance of 281, very similar to what I'd normally get on, on one of these tests when I'm just trying to hit it quite normal, for a total distance of 302. 281 for 302. Spin rate was 2,321. Ball speed, 160, launch angle 12.5. I'll continue with the Epic Sub-Zero with the weight forward. The first thing that dramatically changed was the spin rate by 400 RPM. And that's pretty good. So that's over five shots, 400 RPM of decrease of backspin. That's pretty good. That equaled to extra carry distance of three yards for a 284 carry distance, but for only actually three yards of total distance, the 305 total distance. You can't grumble with that though. Can't grumble with that at all. Um, for me, when I put the weight further forward, I definitely didn't see a dip in distance or height, but I saw more of a deviation offline when the weight was further forward with the Epic Sub-Zero. Telemade M1, weight back. We were getting a 282 carry distance. So comparing that to the weight back of the Sub-Zero, one yard further, nothing much in it. Spin rate's almost identical with the weight back of the Sub-Zero at 2,321. Um, and a total distance of 303. So similar, those two drivers with the weight back. It is unreal. They are so similar. Spin numbers, launch characteristics, ball flight, distance, direction, so similar. Just the difference for me is looks and feel. Of those two drivers, it's the only way I can separate them when the weight is back. Surprising results for when the weight was forward with the TaylorMade M1. Um, I saw a, a, a drop off in performance. I saw a drop off in performance and this is an average of all five shots that I hit of 278 carry distance for a 299. Now, the great shots were carrying into 290s. But as soon as I missed middle, when the weight was forward, the results were horrendous. Dropped down into the 260s. So I found that there was a big drop off between the best shots of the M1 when the weight was forward and the worst shots, it was just, it was unmanageable. I couldn't figure out how it was going to finish. Um, it didn't feel nice as well with the weight forward. Where the, where the Epic felt the same with the weight back and the weight forward, for me, it felt the same. The, the, the TaylorMade, when the weight is forward, and I've said this in the original review, whether because they've stripped so much weight out of it, it just feels too light. It doesn't feel like there's any punch in the back of the head with that carbon in the back of the head. It just feels like there's nothing there, which is a real shame. Um, but the spin rate came down 100 RPM. It's nothing really, if I'm honest. But for the fact that you get that less forgiveness, it's not even worth it. You can see all the ball flights there up at the top, very, very similar shapes. Um, I have a tentative now moving that ball either middle or slightly to the right. I was doing that with both of these two drivers, actually, where the Epic, or with the M2, I was finding it was moving slightly to the left, straight and right. I was struggling to hit anything left with both of those two drivers in both settings, which was nice to see for me personally. You can see all the, all the club data there. So, again, just to prove that it's a, a very, very fair test. My path numbers are looking very good today. Uh, you know, less than one degree from the inside. Attack angle, on average, about two degrees up, roughly. Um, I just had an odd face angle there in the weight back position. For whatever reason, that seems to have opened that up, but it doesn't seem to be the case when I was uh, testing it. Um, club head speed around the 110, 111 mark, which is how I normally play the, the game when I'm out on the golf course. That's my normal swing speed. Um, and you can see all the rest of the data there. I will show you the data... Uh, do, 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 here. So this is all the data from all the shots. And feel free to freeze the frame, freeze the screen, and, and have a read through that. Makes for interesting read. That's all the shots that I hit, all five shots. Of the Epic Sub-Zero weight back, TaylorMade M1 weight back, TaylorMade weight forward, and then Callaway Sub-Zero weight forward. And that's all the club data as well. Just so you can dive into it. If you want to see it, you're more than welcome to dive into all of that. So my outcome. Both these two drivers... Performance-wise, when the weight is back, are identical drivers. So similar, it's untrue in performance. Feel very different. Callaway feels hard. TaylorMade feels springy. Callaway sounds dead. TaylorMade sounds loud. Weight forward positioning, for me, the Callaway didn't change one bit. It didn't feel any different at all. Felt exactly the same driver, but I got different performance out of it. Lower spin, and I was slightly curving it more to the right. TaylorMade feels completely different. It felt like a different golf club, completely. As that weight moves forward in the head, I just feel like the back of the head is just redundant. There's nothing there. There's nothing giving me some support or backing, which is a real shame. Um, very interesting. Looks, they look obviously very different. I don't know which one I like. I like both of them equally. Um, and I don't seem, looks-wise, I can't seem to separate the looks. Uh, uh, if you've thrown in last M1, 
The last M1 for me, looks-wise, beat both these two drivers, looks-wise. This year's M1, I'm not feeling the look, certainly from the bottom, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling the name of the Epic. <laughs> it's just one of those things. But looks-wise, I'm not sure. From the top, I like the look of both of them, from when I'm looking down at them. Guys, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, click thumbs up. Comment below, what do you think about the head-to-head? -head? Don't forget, this is just a head-to-head. -head. It's not me smashing the ball as long as I can. If you want to see that, stay tuned. I'm going to do a long drive competition with these two drivers as well. That's when I get to smash it as hard as I want. Uh, and I might go three weight forward, three weight back just to see what, what outcome it does. Um, if you're new to my channel and you've never seen my content before, welcome. And if you are new, hit that subscribe button. Down in the corner is a red button. It's free to hit and you will get notifications every time I release a video through either your Gmail account or actually through YouTube app. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, comment below, like the video and we'll see you next time. Tell me M1 versus Epic Sub-Zero. Not a lot in it between those two clubs.